Do you have a team that assists you with these calculations? Um, do you have an advisory board? Um, or do you seek the help of other professionals, maybe other farmers in, in, in the sector? Uh, I have a, a, a mentor by the name of Christopher Milamo. Uh, you know, he's, he's been there, he's been in the game. Uh, he, had, he, he owned uh, a farm, a state farm as well. And Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Private Property Farming Podcast. My name is Mbali Nwoko, your host. Once again, every Tuesdays and Thursdays, right here on the Private Property Channel. Thank you so much for watching us here on YouTube and uh, feel free to subscribe to our channel and obviously comment with every single guest that we have onto the show. Get to ask some questions and maybe um, learn a little bit more about the industry. I mean, this podcast is here for you at the end of the day to just give you a bit of insight into the agricultural industry, access um, to some farmers who are making great strides in the industry. And today's another exciting episode because we have a young farmer on the show. Um, he's been here before and this time around, we're just going to touch base with his business and what he's been doing since he was last time on the show and uh, get to understand a lot of challenges that he's been faced with uh, post COVID. And uh, as you know, we've had very, very heavy rains um, in the third and fourth quarter of last year and maybe the first quarter as well of this year, just to understand how did he bounce back from any challenges that he might have been affected by climate change and uh, what can we learn from his strategies on the farm. So if you have any questions for our guest today, please feel free to comment, uh, ask questions, and we'd be happy to respond to you accordingly. So today our guest is Tabo Ditahwe. He's the founder and executive chairman of Nasi Dita Farming, Wildlife and Projects. Tabo, thank you for coming onto the show once again. How are you doing? Now we are from Bali, and uh, thank you to all of you for having me here this evening. Fantastic. Just a reminder, you are based in the Northwest and you are a livestock farmer, is that correct? Yes, yes, I'm a livestock farmer. Fantastic. So, you know, a lot of farmers have complained in late November, December and early January this year of the heavy rains. Were you affected by any chance uh, by heavy rains and how did you manage to, to get your business going during those times? Uh, I remember last year, you know, we had uh, heavy rains. Uh, we experienced uh, what you called, what you call food rot uh, in my cattle and I had a bit of uh, house sickness. Uh, mm. you know, which is caused by your ticks. Because uh, normally, uh, when we experience heavy rainfalls, uh, you know, there tend to be a lot of uh, ticks uh, in, in, in livestock. So that's one of the challenges that I had. Uh, you know, how I encountered it uh, with regards to to the food rot in my small stock, uh, I had to move them from another kraal to, you know, a much drier kraal. Because, you know, when, 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 when uh, the, the, the kraals are wet, you know, uh, the, the, the hoofs tend to, to become too wet and uh, mm. you know, that leads to what we call food, food rot, uh, you know, and you can treat it by, you know, by uh, any, any antibiotic. Uh, normally on my farm, I use uh, Reverend LA and I also use uh, Teramizin. And, you know, I use both, both uh, uh, grease, what you call uh, the, the grease, uh, which decrease which which controls you know tick control which controls ticks in in, in livestock. Uh, yeah. Instead of using you know, instead of using your your water based uh, dubs, uh, you know because when it, when it rains heavily, uh, it just washes off. You know and, and you lose <laughs> a lot of money. You lose a lot yeah. of money in, in, in yeah. the operation. Yeah. And, and uh, tell me, you know, I'm just it's just gonna this is gonna be a general question, but how do farmers bounce back with these unexpected expenses and more so maybe you could answer that question bringing your strategy uh, as well yeah all right now normally normally when uh, you know especially because i'm farming now in in, in uh, 40 kilos from Botswana border uh, it's called wow. the kalari area 
So you need to to make sure that you know in terms of your finances, you know, you you have to keep less of your productive animals, and you know, uh, keep, because when I moved to Red Farm, uh, the guy was supplying Woolworths uh, for three hundred oxen. So I tried to use more or less the same strategy that I was using. Uh, he, he always told me that no, you need to prepare for the next route. Uh, and that is why I always have you know money on the side just to to make sure that I don't I don't fall behind. You know I don't lose a lot of uh, livestock. You know because yeah. uh, when I moved to that farm, when I moved to that farm, you know I had to sell uh, my productive animals. You know because I had nothing to sell by then, and you know mm. I had to to to. to to pay a lot of expenses, you know, in terms of renovations and, and I had to risk, I had to construct trials and everything. So mm. uh, you have to to have that, that that extra money on the side, you know, that money that you just mm. keep in your extra uh, bank account or your savings account that you don't touch, you know. So I think yeah. that money, <laughs> I, I think this money saved me a lot, actually. Yeah, yeah. understood. Yeah. And 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 like you said, you know, you've had the the foot disease, you've had to migrate your far your 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 cattle to another farm. So maybe list these few expenses, you know, just in case any other farmers are listening and are struggling with this, you know, you're fortunate to have another area that you could access for your cattle. But what are some of the uh, expenses that one could, could look at, you know, do they have to pay for extra feed, uh, increased uh, antibiotics, like you've mentioned, um, you know, the, fa the farms, the farm that you moved your cattle to, do you have to pay rent? And how is the rent? Is it per hectare, the land size or per, per, per cattle um, that is on that land? Just maybe break down a few costs that a farmer could be experiencing um, should they be hit with such heavy rains like you had experienced uh, in the previous months. Uh, when I moved to, to the farm, uh, it's a state farm, which is the 30 year lease uh, and from the Department of uh, Road Development and Land Reform. Uh, but, you know, when I moved there, uh, you know, I pay the, 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 the rent on an annual basis. So I'm going to pay once a year. And it's quite expensive because I pay about 1% of the farm's value. And that farm is about wow. 9.4 million. 9 million. Wow. So I need to pay 1% of that and increases by 6% every year. So when I moved to that farm, when I moved to that farm, remember I was moved from a smaller farm to a bigger farm. So I had to make sure that uh, I get more employees, uh, more especially when when I I increase my numbers, because mm. actually, at least I could expand my 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 cattle numbers, you know, to mm. two hundred. So I had to get extra employees. Uh, you know, I had, I paid much more than what I was paying from the smaller farm, uh, or from, from that part. uh yeah from that part. Okay. Uh, I moved from uh, from Pomfret uh, Constable Farm to Ottawa Farm, which is 2,450 hectares. Uh, it's under the Department of uh, Rural Development. Mm. I think someone's calling him. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, Tabo, are you getting a call? Is that why it's. Yeah, it's I'm stopping? getting a call. Yeah. Yeah. Just hang on. Yeah, maybe put your, are you able to put your phone on? Do not disturb. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Do not disturb. All right. Is that fine now? All right, yeah. then go back to the 2,500 farm, paying it off 1%, etc. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, the farm of Tower manages 2,450 hectares. Uh, it's under a 30 year lease uh, from the Department of Road Development and Land Reform uh, with an option to buy after five years. So I'm actually planning to buy the farm you know, after five years. So, with this mm -hmm. uh, rent, you pay it on an annual basis. You know, you pay it once a year. Uh, it's 1% of the farm's value. So, the farm is 9.4 million, which means that I'll be paying uh, 94,000 for this year. And, you know, it increases by 6% every year. So I need mm. to make sure that you know I, I I have I have money now actually to 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 pay up the rent uh, yeah. every year. Yeah. Yeah. How do you come up with calculating all these costs and identifying all these risks? Do you have a team that assists you with these calculations? Um, do you have an advisory board, um, or do you seek the help of other professionals, maybe other farmers in in, in the sector? Uh, I have a, a, a mentor by the name of Christopher Milamo. 
Uh, you know, he's he's been there. He's been there in the game. Uh, he had, he he owned uh, a farm, a state farm as well, and he was lucky enough to 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 mm. to, to purchase another farm. You know, up, under uh, a loan from Absa. Uh, so he's he's the, actually the guy who actually assists me now to you know to always be to ready for 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 this annual increase now six percent and everything. Mm. So. In terms of advices, mm. that's where I get uh, most of the advices from, and also mm. from uh, from uh, Obagim Banda. You know, he's one of the chartered accountants from Absa, so he's actually the one who's actually who's, who's about to assist me now to to purchase that farm. Uh, we, we actually yeah. prepare to buy the farm after five years, but you know, like I said, we it's a it's a plan that we are trying to to set up. Okay, so you're looking at buying this brand new farm, and then what's going to happen to your current existing farm? Uh, you mean the farm in Ottawa or the or the smaller Indiana farm that I had before? Yes, I believe it's a smaller farm that you had before, where uh, yeah. your cattle were staying at before you migrated yeah. them onto a new farm yeah. because of uh, the heavy rainfalls. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, this year we had the production stays. And I had a few chats with, with one of the breeders uh, who we were selling with at uh, Habsburg. Uh, and, you know, I made, you know, from five years, I made about 25K. So my plan now is to, to, to expand uh, my, my small stock, you know, my, my goats on that small farm. Uh, that's where I'll be doing the goat operation and the, and the sheep operation. And that farm, that small farm will pay up the rent of, 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 of a tower farm, and then what I make from my cattle will also will, will, will now uh, uh, buy uh, a tower farm. You know, uh, mm. from 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 the two hundred cattle that I have, uh, what I make from the two hundred, you know, after weaning, I'll I'll, mm. I'll I'll pay all the expenses of the farm and also pay uh, APSA. Yeah. And tell me, are you planning to diversify with this new farm acquisition? Um, so right now you're um, uh, a first and foremost cattle farmer, but are you looking yes. to diversify into maybe going into um, field crops, you know, like maize, sorghum, sugar beans, lucerne, yes. just to also justify the costs of running your, uh, your cattle business? Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at diversifying to, you know, Osage, Osage farming. Uh, as being one of the the contract growers, you know, because I met a young uh, gent in in Brits who's doing ostrich. So I spoke to him and I told him that I would like to do a joint bench with him because I saw that uh, ostriches tend to be quite hardy, and uh, you know, for more especially because I'm based in in the Kalari area, uh, I can't plant. You know, I cannot plant mm. unless I do it under under irrigation, and you know, doing it under irrigation also. Will increase, you know, my electricity bills because I'm under a three-phase escrow bill, you know, uh, oh. <laughs> which becomes quite expensive. So I pay, I pay a lot of money for escrow. So uh, that is why I tend to. I'm looking at investing in, in ostrich because uh, they are quite easy to to grow. Uh, it's not like your 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 your, your broiler chickens, you know. Those are like babies, you know, they die easily and everything. But so with ostrich. Uh, because they are quite hardy, you know, quite adaptable to any area. Uh, I will be investing in the ostrich, I think, later this year. And yeah, with in terms of my expenses, uh, you know, I have, I have uh, expenses I pay on the farm, obviously, will be your feeds, uh, more especially in, in summer and in winter. You know, I need to buy my protein leaks, I need to buy uh, my phosphate leaks in, in summer. Uh, also, my employees, I need to pay, pay salaries for both my mm. permanent employees and uh, my temporary employees, especially when you do your, what you call, animal processing. I need to get extra guys to, to assist on the farm. Mm. Also, when I do fencing, I need to get extra guys. And also, also uh, I need to pay, you know, for, 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 for vaccines, you know, your vaccines and your antibiotics. Mm. Because I moved to a bigger farm, uh, you know, I had to buy in bulk. I don't normally buy, you know, uh, two boxes of uh, three boxes. Now I normally buy, you know, a big bundle. I don't buy in yeah. 500 miles. Now I buy in, in one liters. So that is why this is actually what has been happening now on the farm, you know, trying to to expand the operation. You know, you have to yeah. buy in bulk and you also need to be prepared. So normally what yeah. I do, 
what I do, I, I normally buy my my phosphate leaks, you know, your summer leaks in winter because they tend to be cheaper by then. And, you know, my winter leaks, I buy them in summer because they'll be cheaper also. Yeah. So you've adopted a good model, you know, to mitigate against risks, high prices. Um, and I like the fact that, you know, you speak to your bank, you've got a mentor as well which I think is yeah. it's some things that people tend to forget when they come into the yeah. industry. They tend to do a lot of things alone. Farmers are also in their own farms, you know. Um, mm -hmm. Some of them, um, you know, don't really interact and participate much in the sector. But it's great mm -hmm. to have people to, to leverage against, especially from an advisory point of view, when it comes to um, challenges that you experience and also growth, you know, because growth also does bring new talent challenges. And uh, yes. I like the fact that you've definitely got your, your head in terms of the right mind space, mind space to, 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 you know, negotiate on prices, know yes. when to buy, et cetera. You're a young person, Tabo, in the industry. And, you know, there's this whole movement of young people having to adopt technology, move with the times, et cetera. Are you using any tech, any forms of technology in your farm? Uh, and if so, what are they? Uh, what I actually use is, you know, I check the weather forecast on my phone. You know, <laughs> I take pictures. You know, this I, I I tend to play around with with apps. There's, there's apps available on on Google Apps. I mean, on yeah, Google Play, where I download these apps just for you know for record keeping purposes. You know. Yes. Uh, but I also have interest in, in doing a microchipping of cattle uh, and as well installing, you know, uh, CCTV cameras because I was at Nampu uh, this week and, and I met up with guys from Fidelity uh, who will be coming to install these uh, CCTV cameras on the farm. I think that's, yeah. one, that's one of the few uh, technology, technologies that I'll be using on the farm. And who knows, maybe, Do, later, yeah, maybe later okay. on I'll, I'll be... Uh, Maybe later on I'll be, I'll be flying drones, <laughs> and, you know, just to check up uh, yeah. the work. Guys are really working on the farm, you know, just from, from, from my phone. Absolutely. That's another opportunity. Tell me, do you experience high uh, livestock theft uh, in your farm, especially or in your area? Uh, for my area, there's actually no livestock uh, because I'm, I'm, I'm surrounded by, you know, by, by, your, 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 by my, my wife farmers. You know, they already have these cameras and everything. So we also have group chats. Uh, mm. If we, if the suspicious, sus, if this bug is passing by that are very suspicious, you know, we approach these people mm. and ask them where they're going and all of that. But so far, we have never had any cases of, of, of stock theft. Uh, mm. But uh, when I was still at uh, Constable Farm, uh, <laughs> my employees were the ones who stole from me. So, uh, okay. so there's actually, so there's people, so it's, it's an inside job. It's not really yeah. from far yeah. to, to steal my, my livestock. Yeah, and that's unfortunate. It's not a nice thing to have people yeah. within your organization, you know, taking away from the business. Yeah. But tell us, Tabo, you know, for any livestock farmers that are listening and watching this podcast, um, and with your experience, what some what are some of the advices that you give, could give somebody um, when starting out livestock farming? So maybe uh, list and explain some of the crucial things one could consider uh, looking into when it comes to livestock farming. Yes. Uh, what I normally tell people is, I always tell people like, uh, go big or go home, you know, I mean, I mean, it's quite expensive, you know, uh, yeah. expensive. people, they think, you know, farming is, 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 is a, you know, it's a playground or, you know, something, it's, it's, it's a serious business, you know, mm. farming will humble you. So I always tell people that, uh, more especially when you start, uh, rather go for quality than quantity. Uh, mm. Because I've seen with, uh, my fellow black farmers, you know, I don't know if it's stinginess or if it's people that are trying to test test waters. I always tell you know when you when you buy, you know buy your 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 your, your good size, you know buy, buy a good bull, buy a good ram, mm. you know, uh, and and when you start, I mean, there's there's farmers who black farmers who, who, who farm with over two hundred cattle, and uh, you know of of no quality. And, mm. and there's, there's, a, there's another farmer farming, you know, with your best, best uh, pedigree animals, you know, maybe mm. 50, but he does uh, more than the other farmer. So mm. that's where quality comes in. And, and, and also, I, I don't like telling people to just, to just start small 
uh, rather 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 take five years of saving up that money and then starting then start then starting the, with that first year with with little money because when you do that then you'll be running a, a, a hobby. I always tell people you can't be buying five coats uh, and, and and say you you want to start. Rather go for twenty, at least you'll see your profits. But if you mm. start with five animals, then it's going to take you very long, you know. Yeah. yeah. It's going to take you very long to grow. And then with yeah. your experience, I mean, you've mentioned certain um, things that you've seen with certain farmers, you know, who um, maybe, you know, aren't so aggressive or just don't want to um, go big or go home, as you put it, yeah. uh, when they start out farming. But um, in hindsight of that, um, what are some of the things that you've seen in the industry from farmers that farmers have taken for granted, especially when it comes to livestock farming? Maybe those that, you, that have come to you for advice that you have mentored. Where are farmers cutting corners at this stage? And uh, um, maybe list those things so that we know tomorrow when we go into livestock farming, we know that is something that uh, is not to be taken for granted and you have to do it right the first time. So, so, so maybe just what are, the, some, what are some of the important aspects of livestock farming uh, that some farmers tend to overlook and maybe not take the advice of an experienced livestock farmer like yourself. Uh, I mean, like I said, you 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 have to 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 get a mentor. You know, yeah. that's that's one thing for sure. You need to do your trading. I always tell people that uh, farming is like a like it's like a like a car. You know, you need to get your your driver's license before uh, getting on the road, you know? So obviously you'll do your learners, you'll do your license, and then you can start driving. So with farming as well, you need to get, you know, your 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 your, your qualifications or just general trainings mm -hmm. available at ERC or wherever, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, that's what people take for granted. You know, they think uh, farming is just, I don't know, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how to put it, but I've seen a lot with a lot of people now, and they're quite struggling. You know, it's those people that they've approached me and they felt like, uh, I don't need this guy. I don't need the mentorship. This guy is maybe uh, criticizing me or whatever. But, you know, mm. it's constructive criticism. I need to tell you if you're playing, you know. I always tell people that, you know, you need to wake up. Man. You don't, be, don't be sleeping. Don't be sleeping <laughs> when you're on the farm. You, you wake up at four. You wake up at four and, you know, that 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 four o'clock, you know, I mean, you, then you start your, your 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 job much earlier than if you start at eight o'clock, then waking up mm. at eight o'clock. So I think mm. training and, and getting the, the right the right men, the mentors uh, will will take you far. Absolutely, thank you so much, Tabo, for your time. Um, we really appreciate your advice, especially around livestock farming, and I wish you all the best with the acquisition of your new farm let us know how it goes as well uh and hopefully you know we could have you on the podcast maybe in 12 months from yeah. now um and you yeah. could explain to us you know how have you um experienced life on the farm especially on the new farm yeah. are you growing you know how many cattle yeah. have you grown with by then but yeah don't be a stranger on the podcast but thank you so much for being a friend yeah. of the podcast and just coming back and also just giving us um some words of wisdom and how we can also mitigate against certain risks that we experience in the farming sector thank you tabo thank you very much <laughs> It's a pleasure. That was Tabo Ditahwe from um, Nasi Dita Farming, Wildlife and Projects. He's based all the way in the Northwest and he was able to give us some gems around, um, you know, how he was able to keep his business afloat, keep his livestock firstly safe and alive um, and protected against a disease that was, um, you know, affecting his operations purely because of heavy rainfalls. And this is climate change at the end of the day, Farmers are severely exposed to climate change. And if you're a farmer and an entrepreneur in this space, you really have to be uh, on top of uh, on top of things from an operational perspective, um, seek advice from very experienced professionals to help you grow your business, um, to help you mitigate against the risks and challenges that pose a threat to your business. This is climate change at its best. You can never be comfortable in a farm. You always have to have resources, firstly, um, available to ensure that you are able to purchase new things that require you to grow and protect your business more so uh, work with other farmers in and around your area. If you need to move your livestock from one camp to another camp, do so. 
all at the end for saving your business. I mean, there are people that rely on your business to stay afloat because you employ them at the end of the day. And these are some of the, 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 the ways in which Tabo has kept his business afloat in the past couple of months. And congratulations to him for um, looking to go into buying a new farm. And I hope uh, he does succeed in that because we need young farmers to grow at the end of the day. So thank you so much for watching at home. Keep those comments and questions coming through. Um, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Private Property, um, and then you can follow the Farming Podcast playlist and constantly like, 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 because the more engagement we get is the more um, feedback we get from, the more engagement we get from you is the more feedback that we start to pick up and see, you know, what type of content you like to hear from the Farming Podcast. So yeah, uh, thank you so much for watching and supporting the Farming Podcast. And I will see you next time on a new episode, uh, interviewing another farmer or maybe industry professional. Take care.